Hi guys, this is Jordan here from Ernest Mobile and welcome back to my channel. So no, I didn't really got electrocuted right now. My electrical setup is pretty safe. But you know what? Today I'm gonna show you a bit more in detail all the wiring, all the electrical setup of my Forester. Let's get to it. Okay, so when I really think about it, actually my electrical setup is not that complicated. It's pretty simple, pretty easy to do by yourself You, if you want pretty much the same system. And we're gonna start here on the engine bay. Okay, so what do we have here? First of all, the battery. This is my main battery, which is a 63 amps per hour, which is a pretty small one, and that's because I also have a pretty small petrol engine. You're directly gonna notice here along the fender a relay and an inline fuse. So that is actually the harness for my light bar. I really wanted something totally independent to the original harness of the car because most of the time you end up with problems if you touch the harness of your car. So independent wiring directly hooked up to the main battery for the light bar that goes all the way along the fender and then here on top we have a cable that goes underneath and then through the firewall that goes in there on my dashboard that's for the switch and then another cable that goes all the way up along the windshield and then directly connected to the light bar here you're gonna notice this pretty big cable that goes inside this gray plastic pipe that goes all the way along the firewall and then on the other side through the firewall. And that is actually for my dual battery system. Because, yep, yeah, I have a second aux battery on the back. Also, the alternator is obviously the stock one. And so far, so good. It does the job pretty well, even with two batteries. So we went directly to the back of the Forester because this is where things get interesting. Because I have in there my aux battery, my dual battery system, and behind me my electrical control panel. I'm gonna show you that a little bit more in details. So usually I have a big drawer up there, but for the video I removed it because all the interesting stuff are actually underneath. I made this little trapdoor here so my aux battery can still be accessible. I can change it, I can replace the fuse or I can just have a quick visual check on it. Speaking of this aux battery, this is a 80 amps per hour deep cycle one. So it's really made for an aux battery actually. All right, so I'm not a professional electrician or anything like that, but when I did a few research on internet when I wanted to make this dual battery system, I heard a lot that the capacity of your aux battery shouldn't be bigger or smaller than your main battery. From what I read once again, I think my aux battery here is actually a bit too big compared to my main battery. But so far I didn't have any problem and actually 80 amps per hour for a aux battery it's i think the minimum it's a very small battery so as you can see there are a lot of stuff directly wired to the battery and i think this is a limit and i should really consider here installing a fuse box for a cleaner and safer install but Actually, it's not that a mess. I have all my fuse here and another one here So I know which one is for and I don't have any issues with it And behind this aux battery what you can see here is actually a big solenoid And the big black cable you see here that is directly connected to it is the one you saw on the gray big pipe on the engine bay that goes all the way through the forester 
And that's because this solenoid is actually the thing that's gonna link or unlink my main and my aux battery. It's actually part of a T-Max dual battery system kit I just bought and installed on my car. It was pretty straightforward. I've made a video about it, you should check it out. And the beauty of this kit is that it's a smart dual battery system. So which means I don't have to think about it. I'm never gonna forget to unlink, unlink my two batteries and I won't have any problem at all. Because this little monitor here is gonna take care of everything. So basically when the main battery is at its full voltage, it's gonna link the two and then charge the aux battery in the same time. Pretty simple. And when I stop the car, it's gonna automatically unlink the two batteries. I also have this little button here that allows me to connect the two batteries. So that could be nice if one day my alternator fails, I can start my car in the morning because my main battery is dead. So what I can do is link my two batteries and actually use my aux battery to start the car. It's also a voltage indicator so I can see the charge of both of my batteries. And I think you figure it out, this is my electrical panel control. So this is basically where everything electricity related happened. So we got there a few plugs. We got on the top two 12 volt lighter plugs. This one actually is for my fridge, which is, should be just here and plugged 24 seven. And this one is more for accessories. Usually it's for my air compressor. Underneath, we got two USB ports that are very useful for my camera batteries. And here we got three different switches that are actually not connected to anything. I just put them here so they're nicely prepared if I want to add something else to my electrical setup. And here I got the last plug which I had pretty much recently. I've made a video about it. This is a SEA connector and this is for my solar panel. Because yep, I have a 100 watt solar panel. I can plug directly here and it's actually gonna charge my aux battery or at least keep it in charge if there is any sun. So that's pretty useful, especially if you stay a few days at the same camp spot without driving. And the beauty of it with this smart dual battery system is that when my aux battery is gonna be fully charged, the two batteries are gonna be linked automatically and then the solar panel is gonna charge my main battery as well. And just before showing you my solar panel, this is another addition to my electrical setup, which is a power inverter that converts the 12 volts electricity from the car to 230 volts. And I obviously have an on and off switches here. The only problem with it is that it's not a pure sinus wave inverter. And that's gonna cause a few problems with some electrical accessories. And we had some actually with the, the iron of Lizan, um, you know, the, the thing she used to straighten her hair. They didn't really like the power coming out of this and they start to, to kind of uh, to do weird thing. So we didn't push it, but actually for my laptop and to charge batteries, it does the job. But yep, a pure sinus power inverter is in my mind and will be a nice upgrade to this setup. And just right there, I have my 100 watts Dokyo solar panel. So it's a foldable one. So basically I just have to unfold it, putting straight on the sun, then it comes with a controller, you connect up there, and then I have this big cable going to the controller to my electrical panel control. It's pretty simple, pretty straightforward, and as I said, really useful when you spend a couple of days at the same camp spot. And you know what, actually, that's it. That's my Overland electrical setup. But there's still a few things like not directly related to the setup itself, but things that comes around this setup. Let me show you. 
Here, just above my electrical control panel system, I have this little damp pouch fitted to my molly racks. And in it, I keep all my cables, all my, wait, it's empty right now, but in here I put the charger of my laptop. In here, I put the charger for my battery cameras, and that's, it's pretty useful. I can nicely store everything in there and is directly accessible to use on the control panel. Okay, and another thing I wanted to show you is this little bad boy here. So this is a 12 volt lighter plug with two USB ports. It's from Anchor, got it on Amazon. I'm probably gonna put the link down below in the description. And the beauty of it with this and good quality USB cable, the speed charge of my phone, which is a Huawei P30 Pro, works and that's absolutely awesome and an other thing that is pretty awesome is that on long drive or if we are out on the trails i can put my phone here on the dash with the map the gps and the 4g internet everything and my phone is gonna still keep the charge and th that's absolutely awesome with my old setup after a few hours of drive uh, the battery of my phone was dead and it's not the case anymore, and I'm very glad about it. So for a quick recap, at the end of this video, we can say that my setup is made of six different things. The first one is the harness connected to the main battery for my light bar. The other one is my T-Max dual battery system, which is a kit, but if you are a bit more uh, an electrician than me, I think you can put it together by yourself. Then obviously I have my aux battery, I have my electrical control panel, my power inverter, and I recently added my 100 watt solar panel. So this is a pretty complete, but at the end, simple setup. I really didn't touch the original harness of the Forester, and this is something uh, you shouldn't do, and something I really didn't want to do. So actually everything is independent, and that keeps me away from a ton of troubles. So the point of this video was obviously to show you a bit more in details my electrical setup. I really hope I did the job on that, but also to show you that if you are confident enough, you can do it by yourself. It's not as difficult as you may think. Also, that is not actually that expensive. I'm gonna put the links. I'm gonna try to put the links of everything down below in the description, so you can make a total of it and at the end it's not that expensive when you see the price of those portable generators. Also, I wanted to show you that even in a small vehicle like the Forester, you can nicely fit and integrate it, um, a 12 volt system, which is simple, easy to use, and efficient as well. Okay, so that's it for today's video. I don't know if you really noticed, but slowly but surely, I make detailed video about everything on my setup. So I made one about my roof rack, I made one about my schnorkel. More recently, I made one about my suspension and lift kit setup. And today it was the electrical setup. Hopefully the one about tires and wheels will come soon. So if you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. You can also check my Instagram account, my Facebook page and my merch store. And if you want to support me in an other way, I also have a Patreon page. By the way, hi and thanks to all my Patreons. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week.